the Balkans, the general idea is that communism and socialism were part uh, of the previous century, that now we are in the 21st century, uh, oriented towards West Europe and so on. You claim that communism will win. How? Uh, the point is, which communism? I'm the first to admit that 1990 was a deserved defeat of the whole epoch of 20th century communism. A certain epoch which started with October Revolution ended. And it was a total disaster. I'm the first to admit it. The point is, you know, that when a certain orientation, in this case liberal capitalism, wins, then its own contradictions, antagonisms explode. And I think this is what we are witnessing today. If 1990 was the fall of the Berlin War, the victory, then what we are getting in the first, century, in the first decade of the 21st century is something different. New walls popping up everywhere, financial crisis, so-called terrorist attacks, and so on and so on. These are for me all signs that in the long term, liberal democratic capitalism is not the answer, that we will have to again to start asking difficult questions, or to cut a long story short. Let's admit it that till now our dream was in the same way that when we were, some of us were old enough, very young, we dreamt about socialism with a human face. Till now our dream was global capitalism with a human face, no? in the same way. That is to say, the existing system is okay, just a little bit more tolerant or whatever you want. Now the game is over, we have to start asking difficult questions, political, economic and so on, more radical questions which uh, probe the very fundamentals of the existing global system. And here I claim in one or another version, we can call it communism or not, but something which refers to the fundamental tendency of communism will have to be reinvented. Uh, let's move to Yugoslavia. Why did Yugoslavia fall apart? I mean, which good things caused this? Uh, I have a very specific thesis here. First, I definitely don't believe this story of, you know, uh, uh, 100,000 old years, passions in Balkan, and so on and so on. I think that it's not that the present masks the past. It's that the, the old ghosts of the past, which of course are always there, are resuscitated, reawakened, to cover up, to mystify the present conflict. So no, you don't have to understand the past. I think the only way to really understand what went on in post-Yugoslavia in the 90s is precisely to erase all the past. Something like, you know, on TV, when somebody, I'm the first victim here, makes too many gestures, and it seems meaningful when you hear also the voice, what it is saying. But you know, when it happens on TV, the voice is by mistake cut off, and then you see all the stupidity of embarrassing of bare gestures. We should do something like this with ex-Yugoslavia, you know. Suspend all the sounds which are telling us old myths, Kosovo, this, that, no, I meant Kosovo battle, no? And uh, look at what really was going on. If you ask me, the key was the economic fiasco, the crisis. There was a global crisis, we know in the early 70s, oil and so on. But then in ex-Yugoslavia, we never really rebound. And this was further complicated with a very ridiculous, this is the role of, of ridiculous accidents in history. The ridiculous detail which is now reported in some memoirs that the top nomenclature around Tito was aware of uh, serious economic situation, but they said, listen, Tito is old, if we start fighting the crisis now, this means fall of living standard and so on, Tito will see the discontent, Tito will die unhappy. So it was a collective decision, in order for Tito to die happy, let's acquire as many as possible, and they were doing it depths, to to continue with this false half prosperity. When Tito died, 1980, the game was over, crisis exploded, and then what was the question? And here lies Milosevic's evil genius, let's call it. The question for all communist nomenclatura was in this epoch of obvious economic fiasco, and also Yugoslavia was losing a little bit of whatever international prestige it had under Tito, uh, how to 
legitimize their own rule in each republic. The choice was, of course, to play the nationalist cards. We are defending our own country against Belgrade, or however you defined it. And here Milosevic went to the end. No? The secret formula of Milosevic has, I think, even nothing to do with nationalism. His problem was how can communist nomenclatura survive? The, the answer was making a historical pact with nationalist poets who are always there, which is why, just to uh, finish my statement, I think that if there is anything to learn from the sad decay of Yugoslavia, is that Plato was right in his republic, throw poets out of the city and... All right, so let's move, let's move to, uh, to Kosovo. In your book, The Fragile Absolute, you, you develop your thesis that... Uh, uh, here, Albanians are being supported as long as they remain victims, the depoliticized subjects, and so on. If they want to move abroad, they become toxic subjects. If they move inside, they become fundamentalist terrorists, uh, uh, radicals, uh, and so on. Why is this so? First, I don't think there is anything specific concerning Kosovo in this. This is just the general attitude of this disgustingly well-being uh, Western uh, uh, charity, human rights liberals who again like the other insofar as it is the passive victimized other. The moment the other wants to take its fate, they want to take their fate in their own uh, hence, they are immediately suspected of, 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 uh, 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 of uh, not only nationalism, but fundamentalism or whatever. So this is, this is, this is the general feature of today's global capitalism where, as I often repeat in my books, that old joke, how we like today products deprived of their poisonous substance. We have decaf coffee, uh, decaf Coca-Cola, beer without alcohol, sugar with, uh, uh, coffee without caffeine, sugar without sugar, and so on. And uh, the, uh, the West wants these third world countries deprived, they want a decaffeinated Kosovo. <laughs> no? And here we are, we are, we are all paying the price. But uh, it's not only this. You were caught in a specific mirroring game that I remember using long ago already, namely, uh, did, did, did you notice how the, the, one of the p nice paradoxes, logical paradoxes, where you can see how Yugoslavia was a totally hysterical, fantasmatic space, was that each nation, except you, each nation, in order to justify itself, tried to present itself to the West, which was our ego ideal, as the last bastion of civilization against the barbarian others. Serbs were all the time telling to, their, to the Western media, you know, we are still Christian West, you are basically practically an outpost of Al-Qaeda, or whatever you want, no? You and the Bosnians. But then it goes on, that's what I like. Croats said, no, we are civilized, we are Catholic, Serbs are already Orthodox, they are already, we are the last fortress wall. Uh, we Slovenes, of course, we play the same game. We say, we are not Balkan at all, we are Middle Europa. Croats are already Balkan, we. And then you know you can go to the end. Austria says, Slav gang, Slovenia is already Balkan. German said, Austria, Austrian Empire, too mixed. France said, there is always something suspicious in, 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 in Germany. At the end, you go to England, which claims continent as such is one big Balkan. And you are honorable, because if there is the one who is, if we use Balkan in this term, the foreigner on whom you project your own words. You are, I would claim, the only non-Balkan...